Hello everyone, uh, my name is um, Dr. B. Ang Asebi. I'm going to be taking you through the course module, Experimental Stress Analysis. Um, glancing through the topics, we have four major topics we are going to treat. The first topic is um, strain gauges. Under it we have um, history, basic theory, materials used, and um, gauge construction and mounting. Next we have um, strain gauge rosette. Under it we have the different types. And then we're also going to look at failure theories. Um, the third topic is um, circuit for converting fractional change of resistance to strain. Um, we have two major circuits, uh, potentiometric and wisdom bridge circuit, which we are going to also um, look later. And lastly, we have um, characteristics of strain gauges. Um, under it, we have linearity, transverse, and temperature variation. Yeah, this is uh, this is the reference material used in uh, making these um, lecture notes. Um, the first topic um, is strain gauges. What is a strain gauge? A strain gauge is a piece of electrical device that is used to measure strain. Though the strain is not measured directly, um, it is a principle that um, resistance is proportional to strain. In this case, the resistance is measured and then uh, converted to strain. Uh, we will be wondering why electrical device is used to measure a mechanical uh, parameter strain. Um, this is because um, electrical um, devices are much more sensitive to various change of um, loading such as um, torsion, compression or tension than mechanical device. And electrical devices um, have much, uh, also much more um, resolutions than mechanical device. Um, the prince, this principle that resistance is proportional to strain was first proposed by Lord Kelvin in 1856, but it was not made into practice until um, late 1930s by Simmons and Rogge. Um, application of um, strain gauges includes uh, sensing elements in uh, transducers for measurement of force, torque, pressure, vibration, displacement, acceleration. Um, it is also used in rail monitoring and are extensively used in the field of geotechnical monitoring and instrumentation to constantly monitor dams, inner linings of tunnels, structures, buildings, and nuclear power plants. Um, our second, second topic here is um, history and types of strain gauges. Historically, different types of methods that include mechanical, optical, acoustical, pneumatic, or electrical are used to measure deformation. In 1938, the first um, bonded metallic wire type strain gauge was introduced and over the time um, several types of strain gauges are being used in the market. Um, let's look at some of the major ones. Um, the first one here is um, electrical resistance strain gauge. Um, here we have um, two types. We have the wire type and the foil type resistance strain gauge. And some of their major features is that um, um, the sensitivity how sensitive they are. The sensitivity um, is a dimensionless, is a dimensionless um, quantity and uh, this range is from 2 to 12 and um, it also has a um, uh, non-linearity error of 1 to 5 percent. So the error as a result of um, um, usage of electrical resistance is um, uh, uh, small. Um, the second type is um, semiconductor strain gauge. They were first um, introduced in the automotive um, industry or used um, in the automotive industry in the 1970s. And some of their features are they are based on piezoresistive effects of silicon or germanium material, meaning that um, meaning piezoresistive by uh, that um, they have much more. They are very sensitive to change in resistance from any form of um, um, uh, loading, whether it is um, tension, compression, or um, torsion. Um, semiconductor strain gauge are fabricated as loose units of P silicon regions diffused in in a larger N silicon um, uh, substrate. And uh, this um, can be represented here in the diagram. Um, in the left here, we have um, the form of the um, semiconductor strain gauge. We have the bar type and then the U type. Here is a closer view. The right um, diagram in the, on the right is a closer view of um, the diffuse region which represents the arrangement of the strain gauges um, onto the um, silicon um, um, uh, substrate. Here an example of the material used here is um, silicon. 
and some of the its um, features are uh, first is that um, it has much higher sensitivity as compared to electrical resistance. We see here uh, sensitivities uh, from 100 to 170. Um, uh, its error also due to nonlinearity here is a disadvantage because it's higher, um, 10 to 20 percent. We also have optical strain gauges. Um, here, the measurements and magnification are done optically using system system of mirrors uh, to produce large displacement on scale. And the next topic here is the basic theory, um, the principle in which the semiconductor, uh, the, the strain gauge, um, is used. Um, here, uh, starting with a conductor here that is um, uh, strained or loaded um, in, in tension, uh, if you go three, um, uh, the equation number one is the relationship that um, um, uh, whenever you have an electrical conductor, resistance is equal to um, resistivity multiplied by length all over chain, uh, all over um, cross-sectional um, cross area which is S. Um, here from 1 we have 2 by taking logarithm of both sides of equation 1 and then from equation 2 we differentiate we have equation 3 and um, we can see that in equation 2 we have um, constant um, um, uh, term which is um, dt dt this can be removed uh, we have equation number 4 equation number 4 represents change in resistance over resistance is equal to change in resistivity over resistivity plus change in length over L. Here it means the longitudinal represents the longitudinal um, strain and uh, minus two change in diameter over diameter here represents the transverse strain. So we can have equation number five by substituting position ratio in equation number four. Position ratio is equal to negative of um, um, the transverse strain over longitudinal strain. So from equation number five we can factorize and have this equation um, here we are able to come up with the principle that change in resistance over resistance is proportional to change in uh, length over L and change in length over length is the same thing as the strain and um, this term in the bracket 1 plus 2 mu plus this term is the sensitivity and um, we have uh, now our principle as change in resistance over resistance is proportional to strain where S is constant um, this is the S is the value of the sensitivity, um, which is a constant. Um, so the first two components here represent the geometric component, which is 1 plus 2 mu, and is much higher for most metals. These um, first two components um, with this third component, uh, also a constant uh, change in sensitivity over receptivity over change in length over L, um, uh, representing less of the, uh, which contributes less for most metals. 1 plus 2 mu contributes to much more of the sensitivity for most metals. Whereas for semiconductor, um, uh, this component, change, change in resistivity over resistivity over change in uh, length over L, which can also be a constant, uh, represent much of the, or the chunk of the um, sensitivity for semiconductor. Um, remember we have almost um, 100 to 170 for different types of semiconductor strain gauges. So this represents chunk of the um, uh, Sensitivity and this uh, term is called the piezoresistive um, uh, effect, meaning that um, very, very sensitive to change in uh, resistance with respect to any uh, form of applied load or external um, loading. And here we we'll, we'll look at um, materials for strain gauges, and some of the materials used are constantan, karma. Constantan is 45% um, nickel and 55% um, copper. It has a sensitivity of 2.1 and is for general use. We have also karma, isoelastic, nichrome, platinum, tungsten. And um, we see that um, karma and constantan can be used for general um, use, while isoelastic, uh, isoelastic can be used for dynamic use. Dynamic use in the sense that, um, um, for example, in a CNC cotton, um, uh, the string gate can be used to monitor the, uh, the tool, the cotton tool, um, to be able to prevent. Um, failure because the action of the cutting in uh, CNC is um, is dynamic so it's not a static operation it's a continuous operation so it can be used in that um, uh, respect. Um, Constanta is the most widely used and is the least expensive so let's look at let's look at its feature first is um, it has a sen uh, sensitivity linearity, strain sensitivity linearity over a wide range of strain um, 
it, uh, it doesn't change significantly as the material goes plus. So in this way, uh, it means that um, Sikosantan uh, is, uh, can be used over a wide range of um, strain, um, strain of up to um, 150,000 uh, micro strain. So um, it can be used for that. It means um, it gives a true refl reflection of the conversion of resistance to to strain because of its linearity over a wide range of say else if it's not linear then it means it's uh, the true reflection of the strain cannot be g given so it means error is going to be uh, included if it's not linear and uh, we say also say that it has ex excellent thermal stability it means here it is not much affected by temperature and uh, lastly that its metallurgical property can be modified and processed to minimize error in this case, uh, we mean that um, the material property should be as close to that of the component in which it's going to measure its deformation um, so that we can reduce um, the differences in uh, thermal coefficients of that of the gauge and the specimen material. So this is a diagram of uh, constantan and that of um, platinum. For constantan, though the diagram, uh, the, the plot is limited, we see that it can be used for um, uh, over a range of up to uh, 15 percent a strain and 50 percent strain by I mean 150 thousand micro strain whereas that of platinum we can see the the curve is changing it means um, the linearity changes so you will have to adopt the also change in linearity if you are going to use it um the next topic here is um, gauge construction and uh, mounting um Looking at the diagram from the left represents the side view, and then that uh, on the right represents the the plan. Um, first, let's start with the protective coating. Uh, this is basically to protect it from um, uh, mechanical and chemical damage. Chemical damage, as in uh, moisture, and uh, mechanical, as in from uh, tempering the the strain gauge. Um, we also have the grid. The grid represents the strain gauge. Its active sensing elements that is used to um, uh, be able to measure or that um, reacts with change in the resistance uh, so this is the part that reacts with change in uh, um, resistance we have also the post and the leads these are intermediary components that can be used for connection to external circuit these circuits we are going to discuss them later are the uh, potentiometric or wisdom bridge circuit we also have the backing here. The backing is what holds the strain gauge that is going to be bonded to the, the structure. Um, usually the backing is also called a carrier material. Um, it serves two um, uh, uh, function: uh, one for alignment and also to support the, the lead um, wires, the lead wires for connection to an external circuit. And typical backing material can be nitrocellulose impregnated paper. We also need an adhesive to bond this back into the structure so that um, it can be properly, pro uh, proper, uh, properly glued onto the structure so that we can have a true reflection of the deformation onto the strain gauge. Um, typical um, adhesives that can be used are acrylic and epoxy based. Um, thank you very much. We've come to the end of our first part of the lecture. Um, thank you for listening.